Rick and Morty Season 5 premieres Sunday, June 20th, only on Adult Swim. Sorry, I just, I lash out sometimes. I, I don't know why I do that. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Rick Sanchez was a terrible dad. Take it easy, Morty. Come on, just relax. Because Ricks hate themselves the most. Give me a break. He is a selfish, irresponsible ass, and he left my mother. For this list, we're looking at times the smartest man in the universe was a scumbag father figure, from being an absent father to Beth to destroying his grandchildren's future. What was your favorite scene where Rick was a jerk to his family? Any we missed? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. The Save Button When Morty criticizes Rick's fake vat of acid, he bullies Rick into creating a save button, a device where Morty can return to a saved point in time. What about my video game style place saving device? Oh my god. God, here we go. It's a good idea, Rick. A device that lets save you- Save your place like in a video game, but in real life so that you can try stuff and then go back to your save point. Yes, Morty, I saw it on Futurama. He becomes a deviant, pulling off all sorts of shenanigans with seemingly no repercussions. Rick reveals that with each press of the button, a Morty from another dimension would be eliminated and replaced by the one we know. It wasn't so much a do-over as it was isolating a moment in time, splitting your probable selves, and shunting you into a near-duplicate, equally probable reality, transporting you into it at the moment of parallel determination. Rick merges all these realities, making a single Morty responsible for everything done while using the save button. An angry mob forms against Morty, and his only way out is with a fake vat of acid. It's really amazing the level of pettiness Rick will sink to when his ego is bruised in order to prove a point. God damn it! Say the vat is good. The vat is good. Kiss the vat. Number 9. Leaving his foster children It's no surprise that Rick is a bit of a player, but no one expected him to get it on with a planet. Despite Rick's avoiding Gaia's calls, Beth makes him take responsibility for his potential children. I am not letting you abandon those kids like you abandoned me. Oh my god. You're going to see this baby mama right now. What, like literally now? Yes, now. That's an order. Ugh. They even help Rick's children create a successful civilization. Turns out, however, that a godlike being called Reggie is the father. After a fight breaks out between Rick and Reggie, it's revealed that neither really cares for the kids. Sheep, just keep the city, okay? My daughter and I built that thing. It's important to her. No, bro. I'm a Zeus. I can literally do anything. Think I'm gonna hang around and raise kids? On the one hand, Rick wants to preserve what he's created with Beth. On the other, he abandons Gaia and her children after Morty and Summer accidentally kill Reggie. In the end, Rick is more concerned about any potential revenge Gaia may exact in the future. I mean, Gaia is not gonna raise those guys to hunt us down, right? Oh, most definitely. I put a tracker on their ship. I'll blow it up if they come anywhere near me. That is pretty cold. Number 8. Traumatizing His Family Shows tend to glorify these amazing escapades characters go on. But when you think about it, a lot of mental scars come from these events. Rick forces his family to do countless atrocious things, but perhaps the worst of it was when he got Morty a dragon. Bleed here and here. I'm not co-bleeding. Under authority of our treaty twixt the realms of dragon and man. Oh my god, it's my first gay wedding. Summer! I hereby bind this noble serpent and rider at the soul. Admittedly, he didn't want to get him one, but once Rick bonds with Balthrama, he inadvertently involves his kids in essentially the dragon version of doing the dirty. Oh, 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 why are you still oh, doing it? Why does it feel better now? Oh, oh. I hope it's not because you're watching, but don't go anywhere. It's not even subtle. Rick and his grandkids get involved in a, how can we say this, group soul bond? Not only is it traumatizing to even do this with strangers, it's even more so with your granddad. Wait, wait, wait hold on, hold on. There's got to be something else in here. There's got to be another way. Just give me a second. I haven't read all this yet. Uh, oh, 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 my God. It's played for comedic effect, but it is pretty out there. Number 7. Involving his families in his crimes if you want to go and make yourself a fugitive, the least you could do is not involve those closest to you. During the wedding squanchers, 
we learn that Rick and his pals are wanted by the Galactic Federation. Everyone here is under arrest for crimes against the Federation! As a result of moving in and bringing his family into the insanity that is his life, Rick has put everyone at risk, which results in them having to find another planet to live on. Yeah, about going home, we can't. Ever. Wait, what? 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 Oh, these guys are looking for us now. Earth will be swarming with them. Without Rick's involvement, the family might even be able to call the fire department when they need to. Don't Just worry, relax. Jerry, we called the fire department. You know they won't come here anymore. Realistically, if he cared enough, he would try to separate his two lives. At least to make sure they don't get in trouble because of his actions. Number 6. Fruity Land We all know that Rick was an absent father. It is the biggest motivator behind most of Beth's actions. Are we ever going to stop paying for indulging your father, our children, our planet, our jobs? While he supplied her with plenty of ridiculous toys, including her own safe play world called Fruity Land, it was essentially there to distract her while he was off doing other things, reinforcing her toxic traits. This is a nightmare. I can't believe it used to lock me up in this glorified chicken coop. This led to some dire outcomes, including Beth's friend Tommy being trapped there forcing him into some disgusting cycles of survival and poor playwriting. This artificial dimension, despite its soft and pretty surface, was a manifestation of his larger problem as a father figure. I didn't make Fruity Land to get rid of you, Beth. I did it to protect the neighborhood. Not in a <coughs> noble sense. It was just more practical to sequester you. While Rick may have thought he was protecting the neighborhood from his crazy daughter, his short-term solutions have long-term consequences. Number 5. Removing Morty's Memories Imagine if half the life you lived you couldn't remember because someone else was too insecure to handle it. Yeah, don't don't read into it, Morty. That's what happens when you beat Rick in chess, catch him saying something wrong, or he makes a mistake. Morty's memories have been removed countless times by Rick or at his request, which is pretty dreadful. This, Morty, is my archive of all the experiences you've begged me to remove from your life, lest you go insane. I call them Morty's Mind Blowers. He's also used it on Jerry in the past, so who knows how many people, including Beth and Summer, he's mind wiped. It showcases that Morty is so traumatized by Rick's adventures that he couldn't continue living knowing what's happened, but also that Rick will go to any length to preserve his fragile ego. Wait a minute, why would I ask for that to be removed? Are the red ones stuff you wanted removed? Ooh, that's clever, Morty, but I don't use color to sort things because I'm not a mouse in a European children's book. Number 4. Manipulates his daughter into divorce Rick doesn't like Jerry. In fact, not many people like Jerry. He views Jerry as a mediocre, useless person who gets in his way and destroyed his daughter's future. She was Rick's daughter, Jerry. She had options. Oof. That all ended because she felt sorry for you. You act like prey, but you're a predator. And it's not like Rick wasn't vocal about his disapproval before the divorce. He actively berated Jerry in front of everyone, removing any respect the family had for the guy. And Beth didn't say anything because she didn't want her father to leave. Jerry He's going to spend some time divorced. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, sweetie. I hope I had nothing to do with that. Rick knows this, and once Jerry puts his foot down, he actively encourages the divorce even though it might not be the best decision. Rick isn't just a passively bad influence, he actively tries to manipulate other people for his benefit. To live is to risk it all. Otherwise, you're just an inert chunk of randomly assembled molecules drifting wherever the universe blows you. Oh, I'm sorry, Jerry. I didn't see you there. How much of that did you hear? All of it. You were looking right at me. Number 3. Avoids Therapy How far are you willing to go to avoid dealing with your or your family's mental health? Are you willing to turn into a pickle? Because Rick is. We have an appointment downtown that was set a week ago and agreed upon by everyone, including you. Oh my god, Beth. Oh. It totally slipped my mind. After falling into the sewer, fighting off rats, creating an exosuit, destroying an entire compound, and fighting Jaguar, he's still reluctant to go to therapy with his daughter. Pickle Man, it's too late for me to tell my daughter I love her, but not for you. Oh, well, she knows. I mean, we don't really buy into that kind of crap. It's discussed that no matter how much Beth denies it, he is the cause of everyone's erratic behavior. While he may be the smartest man alive, he will bring himself to the brink of death to avoid dealing with his issues. 
hurting everyone around him. But as Dr. Wong puts it, he's the source of his problems, and only he can be the solution. The only connection between your unquestionable intelligence and the sickness destroying your family is that everyone in your family, you included, use intelligence to justify sickness. Number two, abandons his family. No matter the dimension, Rick has abandoned his family. Just take the Citadel of Rick's, where it seems like countless versions of himself have moved from their reality to build a life in the company of themselves, no matter how depressing it ends up being. All your lives are lies! Don't you get it? They told us we were special because we were Rick's, but they stripped us of everything that made us unique! We know how you feel. We're working stiff Rick's just like you, but our assembly line is justice. When Morty gives in to his hormonal teenage needs and gets Rick to make a love potion, the flu season makes it contagious bringing out some uncomfortable behavior. Oh, crap. Rick accidentally Cronenbergs the entire world. So instead of fixing it, he travels to another dimension and slots him and Morty in their dead counterparts' places. The worst, or best thing, is that the previous worlds Jerry, Beth, and Summer realize that with him gone, they are much happier. Mom! Dad! Summer! Summer! <sighs> Number one, cloning his daughter. Rick can't make hard decisions, and that in itself leads to some pretty horrendous decisions. I know what I want to do. I want you to decide. What? For once in my life, I want you to decide, Dad. Do you want me to stay here and be part of your life, or do you want me to leave? When Beth has a heart-to-heart -heart with her father, asking him to choose if he wants her to stay or leave, he can't make the choice. So instead, he clones his daughter, making it so he will never know who the real Beth is. He also puts a bomb in both their necks meaning he could have killed his real daughter. Well, you didn't want to go, and I thought, okay, that's cool. But then I thought, well, you, you know what would be even cooler is a space daughter? S so I made one, and I put a bomb in her neck in case she ever came back. It shows that Rick is ultimately a broken person who irreversibly changed the lives of everyone around him and actively puts them in danger, making him a pretty terrible dad. Oh, dude, no. No, bad father all the way to the max over here. Rick and Morty Season 5 premieres Sunday, June 20th, only on Adult Swim.